Our parents have cared for us our entire lives. Eventually, it will come time when it's our turn to care for them. You never know when that time will come, and it may come sooner than you think. There are four things I wish I had known before my parents got sick. They're easy to do. Do it today. Don't put it off. It will save you time, frustration, and possibly your sanity. I'm Jenny with Kojo, where we talk about living your best life after 50. It caught me off guard just how quickly I was to assume the role of caregiver for my parents. If you find yourself caring for your aging parent, you are not alone. It can be unsettling to realize that the competent, capable people that you've known your whole life are now depending on you for care. You may think it's not too difficult, but there are some obstacles that can stand in the way of you providing the best care for your parents. Number one, HIPAA. Everyone's heard of the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which ensures that there are safeguards in place to protect our privacy and security regarding medical information. These rules are strictly enforced, which can create some roadblocks when you're trying to care for your parents. Healthcare providers or institutions cannot share medical information with you. That's why it's important to gather the information you need before you need it. The first tip is to make digital copies of all important forms of ID. Your parents' driver's license, health insurance card, Medicare card, social security, and vaccination records need to be at your fingertips. Keep them with you at all times, either on your phone, your laptop, or print hard copies and keep them with you. Your parent may not be able, or they may need your assistance in completing all the paperwork required to be admitted into a health facility. I found out the hard way how important it is to have certain documents right at your fingertips. Before my father could be admitted to the rehab facility where he was recovering from a back injury, we had to provide a copy of multiple forms of ID, not just the numbers to policies, but the original copy or a digital image of the ID. Oh, and if you haven't already, go ahead and memorize your parents' birth date and the last four digits of their social security number. It will save you time when you're filling out paperwork or speaking by phone on their behalf. The next tip is to provide a physician's file for every doctor your parents see. For most aging people, that could be quite a few doctors, so be sure you get a complete list. Ask them who their internists are, urologists, neurologists, gastroenterologists, gynecologists, cardiologists. If you're like my parents, you will have quite a few doctors. And don't just include the doctor's last name. Include the full name as well as their phone, address, and any hospitals they're associated with. Many doctors practice at multiple locations, so be sure to find out which location your parent most often uses. I was asked information on physicians over and over again, so it was really convenient to have that list right on my phone. I encourage you to keep your physician's file and your identification file in an easily accessible cloud-based storage platform so that you have instant access to it no matter where you are. I use Apple Notes, which has some great features for creating folders and subfolders for efficient file management. I also use Dropbox, but there are several other programs out there like Google Docs or Google Drive or OneDrive that will get the job done. If you don't currently use a cloud-based app for note keeping, I strongly encourage you to do so. It is such an easy way to instantly share important information with your siblings, with relatives or other caregivers, and you have it with you wherever you go. Let me know in the comments what your preferred note keeping app is, or whether you prefer the old fashioned pen and paper. Either way is fine. The most important thing though, is to be sure you have immediate access to it when you need it. The third tip is to create a file that lists all the medications that your parents are currently taking. Be sure to include the brand name or any generic name, the dosages for each med, and the frequency, plus any instructions like what time of day it is to be taken or whether it should be taken with food. 
I'll include a link in the description for a free download for the medication template that I use to keep track of my parents' meds. Most doctors you see in any medical facility will require this list. And instead of writing a long list by hand, just email the list to the doctor's office or print a hard copy and bring it with you to the appointment. More and more doctors are taking advantage of patient portals, which do a great job of keeping important information online. Be sure to check to see if the doctor requires that the patient bring the bottles of their prescription medications with them to the appointment. I've noticed this more and more recently, especially when your parents' medications may change frequently. In that case, find a dop kit or a makeup case where you can put all the pills in one central location without them rattling around or falling out. If your parents begin experiencing memory problems, it will be extremely important to know which meds they are taking and whether or not they are missing any doses. If keeping up with medications becomes an overwhelming task for your parent, like it did mine, ask their pharmacy if they offer a bubble pack plan where multiple pills are packaged together by the time of day they are to be taken. All morning pills are in one easy to open foil backed bubble and noon or nighttime prescriptions are packaged the same way. It saves time and frustration and it is easy to see if a dose has been missed. If you're interested in knowing more about how a bubble pack prescription plan works, let me know in the comments. I may do a video in the future about what you will need to know. I can say I highly recommend it. In addition to the identification file, the physician's file, and the medication file, create a file that will collect all the legal documents you may need. The first legal document that you will need is an advance directive or living will. An advance directive is a document that describes a person's wishes about his medical care when he is no longer able to make those decisions for himself. This is where you can find whether your parent has a DNR or a do not resuscitate order on file. If your parent has an advance directive, be sure to place a copy in this legal file. If your parent does not have an advance directive or a living will, be sure to talk to them about creating one today. You don't want to wait until you're in an emergency situation and you realize you don't know your parents' wishes. The rehab facility where my father was required a copy of his advance directive before they would admit him. The second legal document that you will need is a durable power of attorney. This is a document that you will need to have if you will be the one signing documents or making financial decisions about your parents' medical care on their behalf. There are several types of powers of attorney and you should consult a lawyer to see which type best fits your needs. But basically, a durable POA is a document that names who specifically will be making decisions and what types of decisions can be made on your parent's behalf. If your parent is willing to name you or your sibling as the POA, this will save you a ton of headaches in the long run. Oftentimes, a spouse is named the POA, but as our parents age, they may not be in the best emotional state to be making a critical medical decision for their spouse. They may be experiencing some health issues of their own, or they may be having some memory problems, which could make it difficult to fulfill those POA duties. Talk to your parents today about updating their POA if necessary. My father had a durable power of attorney and an advance directive. We just couldn't find them. Now, understand that he kept meticulous records and at least once a year, he would bring me into his office and show me exactly where he kept his most important files. I went through every file in his office multiple times, but they just weren't there. So we decided they must be with his will in the safety deposit box. So my sister went to the bank 
and brought home all the contents of the safety deposit box. I ended up scanning every document to avoid the rigmarole of having to find the safety deposit box key, go to the bank, wait in line, retrieve documents, and then bring them home. I thought, I'm going to avoid having this problem in the future. I'm just gonna take my phone and scan all these important documents so I'll have easy access to them. Don't do that. In a minute, I'm gonna share with you what I ended up doing that will save you tons of time if you find yourself in a similar situation. Back to the story of the safety deposit box. The advanced directive in the original POA, now that's the one on the last page, you'll see a seal and all the signatures. They were not in the safety deposit box. What now? We had the idea that since my father had recently had surgery, surely a copy of the advanced directive would be on file with the hospital, as is often required before any type of surgery. I called, I checked with the hospital, no advanced directive. There was not a copy of it anywhere. Each one of these searches took valuable time to execute, and in the end, we came up empty-handed. We knew we had these documents, we just didn't know where they were. Now keep in mind, my father could not be admitted into the rehab facility until we had the required information. But the clock was ticking because we were not physically able to care for our father at home. We needed him to be in the care of that rehab facility by that night so that he could get some rest and my mother could get some rest. But we couldn't find the information we needed. In the end, the rehab facility graciously admitted my father with the stipulation that we produce the documents as soon as possible, but the pressure was on. Finally, I contacted my father's attorney to see if he had the original copies of the documents we were looking for. Now, this is an attorney who is well-respected, highly professional lawyer in town, but pay attention to this part. It took several days for him to get back to me. It turned out that his wife was in the hospital and that he was out of the office for that entire week. Lesson learned. Don't expect to hear back from your attorney just because you have an urgent need. He may be out of town. He may have other clients that need attention and it may take a few days to return your call. Eventually, he did return my call and he sent the documents I needed right over. I wish I had known to contact him earlier so I would have all these important documents on hand. If you don't have these important legal documents right now, contact your parent's attorney today. Don't wait until you need these documents to begin a frantic search for them. Be sure that these are not copies or drafts, but the original signed documents with the legal seal, which brings us to the second bonus tip of the day. Have your parents' lawyer send PDFs of all official legal documents. Then you will have tidy official documents, not the crooked scans I haphazardly made with my phone using paperweights to hold down the corners of the pages. It makes me cringe to think about all the time I wasted scanning all those documents with my phone one by one, merging multiple PDFs into a single PDF, only to realize in the end, I didn't have the documents with the official seal. All I needed to do was contact my father's attorney and have him send the official documents that I needed. Don't wait, do this today. When I think of the frustration and the time required to track down all these pieces of information one by one, I could kick myself for not organizing this information earlier. The process of checking my father into a rehab facility taught me an extremely valuable lesson about the importance of organization. When my father was released from rehab, he ended up having multiple ER visits, multiple follow-up appointments with doctors, additional fractures in his back, and multiple hospital stays. In all of those cases, I was glad I had the information I needed right at my fingertips. If you want to learn more firsthand experiences about caring for aging parents, be sure and check out this video. And if you've gotten value from today's session, be sure to hit the like button.